But first, it's time for part two of my exclusive interview with nationally syndicated radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh. The Republican Party is making a big, big, the conservative movement, too, making a big, big mistake in planning for the future. You hear things like, well, the Republican Party needs to identify the middle class, the Walmart voters, and come up with policies for them. And then we've got to come up with policies for the Hispanics because they hate us due to illegal immigration. That's the way the Democrats do that. You, you put people into groups, then you victimize them and give the victims power over the majority because they then have grievances that are non-existent that have been made up. And the majority gets cowed into fear because they don't want to be complained at and they don't want to be blamed. So, okay, okay, whatever you want. You, can, you, you want health care? Fine. Go, go, go get it. What made this country great is the recognition by our founders that individuals are all created equal endowed with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. If you look at the Democrat Party, are they for life? Folks, they're the party of abortion. Liberty? Uh... These are the people that are trying to pass any law they can to restrict where you can go, what you can do when you get there, where you can eat, what you can eat, what you can smoke when you can't smoke, what kind of baby you can have, all these things. Uh, pursuit of happiness? I have yet to see a happy liberal. <laughs> I have yet to see a happy Democrat. They're always angry about things. What we need to be doing is, is uh, uh, Reagan, very simple, made the people of this country understand that its greatness is due to them. They're the ones who make the country work, not policies, not laws, not committees in Congress and so forth, and not cult heroes or personalities, but individual freedom, people excelling, doing whatever they wish to whatever desire they wish to work, hard work, to become the best they can be. Self-interest is different than selfishness. People working in their own self-interest benefits the family, the neighborhood, the community, the state, city, the whole bit. And this is what I think the message that the Republican Party and conservatism has lost. The blueprint for landslide electoral victory is right there, and the Republican Party and the conservative movement has just flushed it away. But I, but I keep reading that uh, guys like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and conservative Mark Levin, the great one, our friend, that uh, we, we're, we're taking the party, pulling the party way far to the right, and that the real answer is to moderate. You're David Brooks yeah. is of the, of the yeah. world. <laughs> you know, I, uh, <laughs> I read those things, and I, and I listen to these wizards of smart on our side go on these cable networks and say, yeah, well, the problem is that Limbaugh and Hannity have been moving the party uh, too much uh, to the right. And Colin Powell says, yeah, the Republican Party has stopped listening to Limbaugh. Well, excuse me, we haven't pulled a party to the right at all. This party has gone to the left. It's gone to the center. We haven't done this. We, I, they got the candidate they wanted. I know Senator McCain's a friend of yours. They got the candidate they wanted. They got the campaign they wanted. And they lost huge. And the reason they lost huge is because in a contest of group politics, the experts are going to always get group votes before the pretenders will. And we were pretenders trying to get the group. We've got to go get the Hispanics. We've got to be moderate. We've got to prove we can walk across the aisle. The era of Reagan is over. I never hear Democrats talking about walking across the aisle. I never see any of them praise each other or brag about the fact that they do it. They brag about the Republicans that they destroy. They brag about the Republican bills, legislation that they defeat. We have, uh, the people that are running our party now have such a defeatist inferiority complex. They want to be accepted by people that hate them. They want to be accepted by people that despise them. It makes no sense to me. What about all these, these so-called conservatives that met with Obama? Were you invited to that dinner? No, I wasn't. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't invited either. But, but wait, well, back to John McCain. I've always liked John McCain. I admire his life story. He's not a conservative, Rush. Right. They did get the candidate, the people that thought that we, the Republican Party needs to moderate and, and move away from being the party of Reagan. They got the candidate they wanted. Didn't work out too no. well. The blueprints there. Let me tell you, here's what's going on in the Republican Party, and it's, it's really not new. These people that we're talking about, the Northeastern Blue Blood Rockefeller Country Club types, they didn't even like Reagan. They, um, Reagan was an embarrassment. They believed that he was the dunce, an amiable dunce. But what it's about, Sean, is abortion. These Northeastern moderate liberal Republican types all have wives. And I know this is going to sound pedantic and simplistic. But I have experienced it, and this is how I know it. These guys that we're talking, they're, they're big money people. They are contributors, donors, fundraisers. They're just embarrassed to be in the same party with people in the South who are pro-laugh and who go to NASCAR races. 
And that's at the, that's at the heart of this. Uh, they go to the convention, the Republican convention, with these people they think are hicks and hayseeds, 24 million of them without whom they couldn't win. So it really is about that. They won't say so publicly, uh, but it, that, that it's not just that, but that's, that's a large part of it. The Obama did. It's a great, if you have time for me to, to yeah, analyze We have plenty of time. Uh, do you, does anybody, anybody with even half a brain really believe that Barack Obama went to dinner with a bunch of conservatives to have his mind changed. Point. If he did, there are some genuine conservatives he could have talked to. He could have invited us. He could have gone to human events. He could have gone to some people uh, at the Heritage Foundation. He doesn't want his mind changed. He's co-opting these people. He's bringing them in. He wants the establishment media inside the Beltway, punditry and so-called journalism, to be afraid to criticize him. I mean, if he's broken bread with them and he's made them feel good about themselves uh, and given them an inside view of exactly who he is, it's going to be very difficult for these people to, uh, to criticize him. I don't think for a minute that he cared to have his mind changed. Mm -hmm. Would you? No. Would you have it? Would you invite a bunch of liberals over to dinner at your house the express purpose of having them change your mind? If you did it, you would, you would be trying to talk sense into them.